Today's episode is brought to you by Maple Pharmacy. Running to the store waiting for a prescription to be filled is the last thing you feel like doing when you're sick or caring for someone who is. That's why Maple Pharmacy has a large fleet of delivery vehicles to serve you with super fast and free delivery. When you request free pickup service, they will come directly to your door, pick up your prescription, and then deliver your medication to you as soon as it's ready. They have an extensive selection of vitamins and supplements presented in a state-of-the-art display system, including all kosher vitamin brands. Their in-house vitamin specialists will help you choose the best options for you. Located in Central Muncie, the store is conveniently located for customers in Spring Valley, Airmont, and Chestnut Ridge, or visit them online at maplearlex.com. Maple Pharmacy, experience healing with heart. Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Sharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles. And I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, a neuroscientist and psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's going well. I have a question for you. Do you practice yoga? No, No. I don't. My daughter does, but I don't. Okay. My daughter does too. She really is into it. Um, For me, I have tried. I've tried hot yoga. I've tried kundalini yoga. I have... Every time I go away, if there's a yoga class, I uh-huh. try it. And for some reason, I have not connected with it. And I really need to because especially as I get older, my flexibility right. is, you know, it's limited. I was never very, I was never that kid who was doing splits in, you know, elementary right. school anyway. But I really would love to develop that passion that people have for it and, and enjoy it. Yeah. And also another thing that's good for as you get older, it's also good for balance. Yes. Because that's a big issue and it's good for developing your core right. and for relaxation. And there's studies on it helping for anxiety and depression. Right. So it has a lot of good, good things. things going for it. Right. Yeah. So our guest today is actually somebody who um, who does practice yoga. She's a mm-hmm. yoga teacher um, and maybe she can kind of br- help bring me over to that side a little bit. Um, <laughs> Neely Fisher is the founder of The Flexible Chef and the author of the book, food you want for the life you crave. As a mother of four, a home chef, a yoga teacher, world traveler, and wellness entrepreneur, Neely's mission is to inspire people around the world to live their most vibrant and crave-worthy lives. Her book, Food You Want for the Life You Crave, features over 100 fresh, gluten-free, and flexible recipes that create craveable and energizing dishes, all while saving time and banishing meal prep and stress. Hey, Neely. Hi, Hi, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. So first of all, I have to say, I, I your new cookbook is, is beautiful. I mean, I believe that a cookbook with real beautiful photos is life. I mean, I so much so that even though you've sent me the PDF so I can look at it before I interview, I think I'm going to have to go out and buy the cookbook because it is <laughs> really, really stunning and inspiring. So I can't wait to try some of the recipes out. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about yoga. So tell me, I know yoga's had a big influence in your life. So if you want to give me a little bit of background and, and how that happened, that would be great. Yeah. I love starting with yoga. That's great. Thank you for, in, thank you for paving that path. I'm, I'm, it, it's fun to talk about like carrot cake also sometimes, but the, um, the, the, the way that yoga has kind of led me to the flexible chef and all of that is I think even a little more interesting. So thank you. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, it took me a while to get the flexible chef, you know, that it was a dual meaning or maybe even a she was jet lagged at the time, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. And we could talk a little bit about, about the, that, the meaning and all of that as well. Um, so I um, have been a yoga teacher for close to 20 years and, um, I mean, I was always cooking in my mom's kitchen and food was always a passion and health was always a passion, but my kind of day job was being a yoga teacher. And, um, I was that person that I think you tried to talk about you, um, mm-hmm. who couldn't touch your toes and, you know, like didn't never, never got it. I was always like a workout person, not a yoga person. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
something, something kind of clicks when you find like the right teacher, the right method, the right moment in your life, by the way. Right. Like I started when I was pregnant, um, you know, and like, that was something that was going to benefit my back. And so like, you kind of get into it and various different ways at various different stages, but you don't have to do yoga, but like if you stumble upon it at at the right time with the right teacher, it can be magic. Um, But in any case, I was that person really that couldn't touch my toes and it was, it never came easy for me despite doing some dance when I was younger and stuff. Um, And like the, the, the pivotal point for me happened when I sort of mastered the rules of alignment, right? Like Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to, parallel the rules of alignment in yoga with the rules of a recipe and cooking, but th- that's how like I initially kind of developed this method. And um, once I was able to understand the biomechanics of the body, you know, bone stack over hip, like, you know, knee, whatever, like all the right. different biomechanics and the fun began, of course, once my body became more flexible, because it was just painful before that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fun began after I mastered the technique and I was able to like, do all this other really cool stuff, right? Even some stuff that's like not technically in the book. Um, and the practice evolved into more of like a really fun experience, blasting music and doing really cool tricks and just like having some fun with it um, while staying safe, of course, and grounded. And um, my th- the development of The Flexible Chef came from this world that I was living in, viewing like the body through the lens of alignment, viewing recipes through that same lens, recognizing how important it is to master the rules of a recipe before you can break the rules of a recipe. And what does that mean? And what does it mean to be flexible in the body? And what does it mean to be flexible in the mind? And what does it mean to be flexible in the kitchen? And my whole life kind of evolved around this concept of flexibility, um, which of course, um, for those of you who aren't flexible, both in your body, your mind, or your life, you know that in order to be flexible, you first have to have structure because otherwise you're just like loosey goosey everywhere. Right. <laughs> and so we can talk a little bit about what that means and, you know, how to create structure in order for the flexibility to, to be, you know, to, to give you freedom in your life versus just right. kind of right. leave right. you everywhere. So you actually set up in the book, your flexible roadmap, you've actually set up your rules. So then you know how to break their rules or change Correct. those rules. And and you say something so great. You say, make your diet fit your lifestyle, not your mm-hmm. lifestyle fit your, right? Did I get that right? Um, which I think is, is so important. Like people are so um, concentrated now on all these different kind of diets and they turn everything upside down and it it's not necessarily always working for them and they become so committed to it without really thinking about is this really what's good for me for my lifestyle like that flexibility aspect that you're talking about so do you want me to give you an example sure what I, what I meant by that so okay. um the the if, for, if you guys missed it it's make your kitchen and your diet fit your life and not the reverse Right. right. And so like I, I, I suffered from this myself and then later on, you know, watched other people once I'd like gotten out of that trend. But like I was that person that would go out for dinner and if it was past 6 p.m., I'd freak out because like my rule was like, I don't eat past six o'clock at night because you're not supposed to eat right before bedtime. Mm-hmm. And I would be like zero fun or like maybe <laughs> I would like chip away at some celery or something like what is that I had no life um and then later like I would be going out with friends and I'd you know be with someone who like had so many rules around like their whatever it was and or I don't know they were on some juice cleanse and they were also just sipping away on seltzer water at dinner time and it was sort of missing the point because yes sure every once in a while if there's something going on you got a medical thing I mean obviously but it it happened so much that it was like your, your, the diet that you choose really needs to fit your lifestyle. Like, and, and how can you be flexible and be like, okay, you know what? I know my rule is that I only eat you know, three hours before bedtime or whatever, but guess what? Tonight's special. I'm going to go out. I'm going to have some, you know, salmon and salad and I'm going to have a glass of wine and enjoy my time with my friends and everything will be fine the next morning, you know? Right. Right. <clears throat> as long as you get back on track or keep to immediately. Yeah. Correct. Yes. The yeah. secret is to get right back on track. So <laughs> You know, like having to lose 30 pounds is, 
means that like you didn't get back on track the next day. Like the, the way to kind of, and I used to need to lose 30 pounds by the way. So like the way to kind of stay on track is exactly that is like to just wake up the next day and get back on the treadmill and do, and do your grind and get back to your healthy habits and, and then everything else is okay. And, and I also like, you know, you, I don't know if you realized you mentioned like, oh, so have salmon and salad, which is actually a very healthy meal, generally speaking. So, I mean, mm-hmm. the other thing, you know, probably too is, you know, to be flexible, it doesn't mean that you have to kind of have everything on the menu, you know, to sort of, mm-hmm. from what I'm getting from you is sort of also like, kind of think about like, why am I here? So like, I'm here to socialize with friends and stuff like that and have a nice meal, but it doesn't mean you have to kind of say, oh, well, since I'm eating and since I'm you not going to have some calories, I might as well have all the calories. Like, right. Like totally oh, fall course. off the wagon. Right. Totally right. fall off the wagon. <laughs> right. You know, it's, or it's like, or it's like people set up these unrealistic expectations, like, oh, I'm going to eat like really clean and really healthy this whole week. And then they have like a little glitch and it's like, well, okay, you know what? I might as well just like, let it all go for the week. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you know, yeah. I, I used to be like that. Like, I think a lot of us, right. Like, yeah. like weekend comes along Friday night dinner. Mm-hmm. Like, let me just eat the whole hollow. Like, right. I'm sure I did that one time in my life or whatever, <laughs> you know, like, and you know, oh, sure. To a third slice of whatever that is. Cause you're all sitting around. And I think once you get really in tune with your body mm-hmm. and, and this is why I think staying active, whether it's yoga or whatever you're doing to stay active and being aware of your body, um, knowing when you're full, my, my six-year-old, I, he must've gotten it for me, but I don't like actually ever remember teaching him that the beauty of parenthood, right? Like, yeah. did I tell him that? That's so cool. <laughs> that sounds like I would have said that. So I said to him, Liam, do you want any more, whatever it was for dinner? And he goes, no, thanks. I'm 80%. And I'm like, <laughs> that's good. And he was, that's cute. He was like, saving room for dessert so he only filled up 80 percent oh, oh like, right right i was like i love it. that's so and cute. it's become a new thing in our family like liam like created this whole like i'm 80 percent, and now whenever we're at the end of the meal it's like are you 80 percent? like you never really want to be 100 percent because that stuff right? right right that's a great check-in it's so yeah. how old you said he was six He's sick. Oh my God. That's Cute. so awesome. So you touch for a minute about Friday night and Hala. And I know I hear from so many people that Friday night, actually all of Shabbos is such a challenge for them. There, mm-hmm. First of all, there's so yeah. many meals and there's so many big meals and then mm-hmm. Shabbos is over and they go eat pizza. It's just, you know, we've touched on this before in other podcasts. Um, so any, you know, any advice that you can give that how people can get through oh that God. 26 hours and be flexible and enjoy it and enjoy the time with their family. Cause I know some people it totally stresses them out mm-hmm. sitting down to these holiday right. and Shabbos meals. They just, you know, they don't know what to do. Um, so anything that you can offer to the audience, that would be great. How much time do we have? Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> how much time do you need? <laughs> well, I have a lot to say about this again, okay. because I was that person that felt like after 26 hours, I'd gained four pounds mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Sunday morning was like, where is that belly? Like yeah. it's, you just feel bloated and like icky the next day. And you're like, why did I do that? You know, right. but you're yep. sitting around, like you say, and there's food. And then... So yes, I have a lot to say because I've learned my lesson Okay, and my life is now more enjoyable because I wake up on Sunday morning and I don't feel stuffed, but I've still enjoyed my weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. The first, uh, the first tip is to manage your menu smartly. Now, if you're going out to friends, it's a little more challenging. It's sort of like when you go out to den- to like a, you know, restaurant, you just have to sort of decide what your boundaries are. I'll, I'll give you an example about going out in a second. Okay. Um, but make a smart menu. I, right. um, I have been, I live sort of all over the world and we spend, I spend a lot of time everywhere, including the U S and Asia and Israel, like all different places. And so I see different trends in different areas. When we were living in the U S um, in the tri-state area. There's like, it's like a Thanksgiving meal for dinner and lunch. And there's so many options. It's right. like actually like not even good. It's just, whoa, right. like, yeah. why do you need like four proteins, four carbs, seven salad? Like it's so yes. much food. Yep. Right. And, um, when I was living in Asia for a long time and because like portions are smaller and food is like a little bit more like delicately presented and like very flavored. And I started just making less. 
but making right. it so good mm -hmm. that each component is just so satisfying. I don't do a lot of side carbohydrates because I just, especially at night, it's like, oh my God, rice mm -hmm. at night, like a whole big thing of it with your meat and your chicken. It's just so much food. Right. I especially really yeah. during the summer when we eat later. Uh, it's yeah. like so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So <laughs> when I plan my Friday nights, I plan it around a protein. Again, depending on like if it's just us or if it's guests, but like a great protein, a couple veggie sides. Like I have some lightened up kugels. Like I do a cauliflower kugel that is just cauliflower mm. and onions and eggs. Oh, wow. I should, is, I should I should post that recipe. I was gonna say, is that in the? I don't remember seeing that in the it's book. It's not. <laughs> It'll be like in book two or whatever. Okay. Jewish, great. Jew, Jewish food you want for the life you crave. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there like you that. go. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like, and so usually the carbs in my household are coming from dessert and wine. And mm, I don't really uh -huh. do a lot of like heavy duty stuff on the side. I actually, I work gluten-free, so I make my gluten-free challah most of the time. And I find that it's like lighter and it's also not like a humongous big thing like that you can just like gorge on. So um, yeah. anyway, yeah. So okay. it starts off with, with smart menu planning and having options in front of you that are good for you. It's like if you open your pantry and you have a bunch of gummy bears and Twizzlers right at your eye <laughs> level and you're hungry, that's what you're going to grab. But if, you know, if you have like almonds and tuna, that's sure. what you're going to see first, right? right? It's the same thing. Um, should I continue? Yes, please. Please. Well, okay. Um, um, give us another the other thing two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so going back to the, the, the if you eat out thing, yeah. um, like, so I have like particular dietary stuff. We're gluten-free. So mm -hmm. like I, and I hate imposing on my hosts right. to make us something right. special. So it, um, even if they don't ask, it's actually kind of embarrassing to go to someone's house and they make everything that you can't eat. And then you, you actually insult them. That's worse than telling them up front. Right. So yeah. I usually say, Hey, we're gluten-free and whatever, if there's something else. Mm -hmm. Um, but please don't make us anything special. Like we're fine with, you know, chicken and salad or whatever. We're right. fine with salad. Or I'm like, I keep it, I make it really easy for them mm -hmm. to follow mm -hmm. my guidelines, which is basically like all of these chicken and salad and it's fine. Right. You know, and this yeah. way they just know. Um, but then they, but then I, and then I don't insult them by not eating their whatever right. it is. So like yeah. you could just like, what, if you have any food limitations or you're avoiding something, like just tell them and then you know that you don't have to eat it. Like, you know, when it comes at you, it's, it's, it's kind of insulting to like not eat it. Right. But, you know, right. you can't. Well, something I um, do now, which I haven't never did in the past, but in the last few years, I always ask ahead of time, are there any allergies, mm -hmm. anything that, you know, even dislikes, anything that I need to know? Yeah. Because I've been in yeah. situations where you serve fish for dinner and they're like, oh, we don't eat fish. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, you know, and my, I, my kids are gluten-free, so I can accommodate, you know, people are gluten-free. So I always ask the question up front mm -hmm. and I hope they're honest and they share with me right. because I, yeah. I will accommodate, I'd be more than happy to accommodate right. them. And sometimes right. somebody will say, oh, we're gluten-free, you know, we'll bring gluten-free call. I'm like, that's great. You know, please right. you know, bring gluten-free yeah. call or bring gluten-free dessert. That's, you know, very open to that. But that's something yeah, that's yeah. only come up recently in the past few years where I know to ask those questions because it right. seems that mm -hmm. a lot of people have a lot more dietary restrictions now that have to be accommodated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So um, since uh, we're talking about like entertaining, I know you have entertaining hacks, things that you recommend, you know, that can, you know, you can buy store-bought gluten-free cake mixes and you jazz mm -hmm. them up and do you have anything you want to share? Yeah. I, look, it, it's summertime now too. And I, the last thing I want to do is be in the kitchen. Right. I'm actually, I'm actually doing a book signing in a couple hours at the Ooh. local farmer's market. Okay. And I was like, ah. oh, I should bring something for them to sample. But like, I just don't have time. Like right. I don't have time to make anything. So I actually just jazzed up a store-bought mix and made a little banana bread and like jazzed it up with some hemp seeds and little oh, toppings yeah. and some nuts and whatever. Right. And I'm right. just going to like, and I'll tell people, I'm like, listen, I talk about this. Like this is a jazzed up mix, but like it tastes homemade. Yeah. Like how cool is right. that? Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So, I mean, and I know like, I'm sure a lot of listeners know about boxed mm. cake mixes, but I have a whole 
section in the book. And I also have some blog posts about this, like ways to jazz up store-bought mixes so that they taste homemade because it's gross if you just add the water in the you know, in the oil, but if you, but if you add, you know, coconut milk and chocolate chips and all sorts of things, and maybe you make an icing, it's amazing. Right. So, and there's a lot of, there's some amazing, I mean, so many of them are kosher and there's some amazing brands. There's a healthy brand that I love called Simple Mills, by the way. Okay. Um, it's all, it's almond flour based, really clean. Oh, I use that for like, we do Le Shabbat morning muffins. So I, oh, I, nice. I'll often make the Simple Mills mixes and I'll grate some zucchini and carrots in there and add some you know, flax meal or whatever. That's, yummy. That's yeah. great. I'll put a link to Simple Mills on the website so people yeah. can look. Simple at Mills. I hope you're listening. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, um, what else? I mean, so many things like yeah. it's depending on where you live. Like if you run out of time, don't just serve the store-bought rotisserie chicken, like shop it up and make a curry chicken salad. I have right. actually have a recipe for a curry chicken salad. You could totally oh, store, mm-hmm. store store by the chicken and make the, the dressing and throw it on top of a you know, beautiful bed of greens or make some chicken lettuce cups or, you know, jazz it up so you're not just like slabbing on the, the, the bot thing. And so that you've mm-hmm. invested some time and and um, you can totally concoct something bought into homemade. Right. So this is part of your flexible chef uh, ideal, I guess, is that you can do things like that or you have... Um, tips in the book like flip it where you have a recipe that you can slightly change or do something different to make it a different recipe even Mm -hmm. or use leftovers yeah exactly so going back to what we had originally started the conversation about like the whole what does the flexible chef brand actually mean it and and in that 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 piece kind of fits right in because It's about aspiring for excellence, right? This kind of chef-like quality. Um, The the difference between a cook and a chef, right? Like a chef who's like creative and inventive and masterful and excellent. And so we're not compromising on the integrity of the end result. We're just being flexible with it. We still want to live this amazing life. We want to look good. We want to feel good. We want to eat well. We want our food to be amazing. But we also are limited by so many different things coming our way. We have limited time. We have limited right. resources. We have sometimes limited knowledge. And so the whole concept of flexibility is to give this dose of sanity and say, hang on a second. Let's take a deep breath. Let's chill out. You don't have enough time. Let's figure out how to repurpose. You want to buy something? Let's figure that out. You don't have this ingredient? Okay, don't go on a wild juice cake. Don't goose go chase. on a wild goose, goose chase. chase. Um, what can we substitute? How can we? How how can we view this end result of gorgeous, delicious food, amazing, happy life? And let's put some hacks in place to deal with it because we're bombarded with information, and and like a lot of us just need some help. Right. Oh, for sure. Right. right. That's that's for sure. So no, it's good. I mean, that's and you have even the list of substitutions that I was looking at in the cookbook, which is so smart, because a lot of times I think people take the recipe and they're like, you know, they have to follow it every step of the way. Right. But there are ways to maneuver and manage. And I think it's so, so smart to have included that in the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I never, never, never run around. There's always something that you can swap. So, it, so at, in every recipe, I have a section at the bottom Mm -hmm. called nail this which basically gives you a shortcut to the recipe being awesome what's the most important thing what rules should you probably not break in order for the result to be great Mm -hmm. and then i have a flip it section which shows you what parts you can basically what rules of the recipe you can break what you can substitute what you don't really need what's suggested Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what things you can add ways you can repurpose right what to do with it the next day how to, you know, how to modify it for some picky eaters or going back to our entertaining question. What if you have someone who's dairy free, vegan, gluten free, well, whatever, how can you make that thing, um, suit them? How can you use that recipe? But you know how, like, sometimes you'll, you'll have a lot of different preferences at a table and you're like, yeah. okay, really? Like, do I have to make seven meals? Like <laughs> ridiculous. So how do you choose, yeah. let's say a master recipe and then adapt it. So like, I don't know, let's say you're doing, I have a recipe for a chicken adobo inspired by my, my time spent in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have somebody vegan coming over, like instead of making them a whole new vegan dish, like how can you make the chicken adobo vegan? 
Right. You know, it, uh-huh. you substitute tofu, blah, blah, blah. The person doesn't feel so bad that you made them some like new special thing. Right. Um, yeah. And so things like that, saving time, being smart about menu planning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And do your kids eat all the foods? Are they picky eaters? Are they pretty much on board? What's, um, what happens yeah. in your kitchen? So they're really on board. They, they're all different age. My oldest is actually going to college. Oh, oh, nice. um, and I still have a six-year-old at home. And so like they all have, you know, gone through various stages of like things sure. they absolutely will never touch. And I'm just you know, pulling hairs out, but I'm, you know, like over the years I've learned patience because I know that they come around eventually if you model the behavior and you have the availability of delicious food. Sometimes right. I starve them before dinner so that they're really hungry <laughs> when it's time to eat the salad at dinner. But yeah, they've all gone through their stages like every other kid. And I've had my challenges like every other mom. Right. Um, but you know, they're kind of on board now and I'm, it's been so long and they, they help me in the kitchen and you know, some things they like, some things they don't like, but in general, I'm never, ever, like, I, I never make, you know, a kid meal, an adult meal, and a picky uh, eater meal. Like, this is dinner. You know, I, I base dinner largely off of what I know they like, right? Right, like, sure, right, right. I'm not making, um, you know, grilled sardines if no one's going to eat them. That's right. And um, is, is your husband but, also, is your husband also on board with with the, yeah yeah he is um yeah i mean and he he runs and <laughs> and is like healthy and yeah i mean he like likes his gluten so he has his gluten when he wants you mm-hmm. know he's got right. his pretzels next to his desk and they help him focus i guess and that's right. okay I don't, <laughs> right um he does what he does but yeah yeah that's great um okay uh kitchen tools that you can't live without anything that you feel is yeah. imperative mm. if you were on a, if you were on a desert island with maybe some electricity <laughs> um and, and you had to choose four things that you absolutely can't how many without. four i get four yeah. yeah oh okay i have so many new fun gadgets i'm worried about okay. about telling you about them before i've like fully tested them okay, um, so okay so like let's go simple i but i use my vitamix every day mm-hmm. uh-huh. not just for things like smoothies and stuff. My daughter makes a smoothie every morning for herself, but um, I use my Vitamix for salad dressings. I'm obsessed with keeping mm-hmm. salad dressings in the fridge yeah. because yeah. I think if you have an amazing homemade salad dressing that a healthy salad is just seconds away, but if you don't have a dressing, it's so annoying right. to make a I, quick salad. I agree. It's so, so I, interesting you brought yeah. Vitamix because we just were having this conversation yesterday at my house because we make smoothies all the time. And I have a very good blender, but I just said to my husband, I think we have to finally invest in the Vitamix, but what my concern is my Vitamix will then be dairy because we use whey protein powder oh. in our smoothies. I'm like, I don't know mm. if I want to spend all that money on my own Vitamix and then it's only mm. a dairy Vitamix. So uh, it's a debate that's going Can on. Can you get another house. set of I was and... thinking or another, yeah. <clears throat> like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, think about uh, it. we also do, we have a Vitamix, we have, what's up? actually we have a Ninja with a very big, Mm-hmm. Um, what you know, pitcher with it. So we do soups with it also. Yeah, yeah. But okay, you might so. be able to get an extra pitcher because the investment what, yeah. is the machine. <clears throat> right, that's what right. I'm thinking. I might have to do. Yeah. Might be, might be yeah. time. I've held off this long, but yes, yeah, might be time. All right. Yeah. So okay, Vitamix or okay. Good um, my second one. Don't kill me because this is going to require an additional investment, but. <laughs> It's not required. It's just one of my favorite things. Yes. Um, a dehydrator. Mm. Uh-huh. And no, I don't just dehydrate like mango or dried herbs. Mm. I make everything in it. I have a recipe in the book for, um, I think like the only reason to buy, no, the, the, the only reason to buy my cookbook. I said that so wrong. Um, <laughs> No. It, it, this is a reason in itself okay. to buy okay. Okay. <laughs> right. the crispy onion recipe because ah. I make these crispy onions in the dehydrator they, that I throw on literally everything and it elevates a dish mm. to life. Oh, I mean, yeah, I people go that. like, what is this? Bananas, like, it's just, yeah. it's insane. Um, and so I make these crispy onions and I keep them in a container for like a month, but I make granola in there and I do like raw crackers that keep in the fridge forever mm. and oh. like little desserts and Anyway, it's great because you can't burn your food. Just leave it and forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> it does the work for you. It's infused with so much flavor. You can also like, you don't have to commit to one of these like massive things. You can get like a mini one that kind of sits somewhere. It doesn't even have to be on your countertop. You can put it in your laundry room or whatever. Love, love, love. I have okay. um, 
an Excalibur, but they have lots of brands. Okay, got it. All right, give, um, us, give us one, oh more. One, one more. One more. <laughs> one more. One more. Um, oh my God, I want to give you something small. You know what? I'm going to give you something little, and okay. you can not, You don't have to think about the investment. I've just recently discovered these silicone molds. Uh, uh, kind of think think like um like an ice cube mold, but a lot bigger. Right. Um, and it's basically meant to freeze batches of things. So like if you made, um, like a marinara sauce or a pesto or like even like maybe even a soup or something, cause it's kind of like single serve uh-huh. portions. Um, and I love it because at the moment I'm kind of freezing things in Ziploc bags, which is not right. always great depending on what you're doing. Yeah. And it right. just, it just makes, I have a whole like organized freezer that allows me to be, flexible on the go like what's for dinner tonight oh my gosh and I can just pull something out of the freezer so I love these silicone molds because it just makes the portion sizes easy and it just you can just you could take them out of the mold and then pop them in a Ziploc bag label it and you can just pull them out when you want okay so you'd need a freezer on the desert island I guess (laughs) (laughs) that is true all right well Neely thank you thank you Um, so much this is great we have to have you back yeah so Neely's book is food you want for the life you crave it features over a hundred fresh, gluten-free, kosher, flexible recipes. Um, It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can also go to her website, Mm -hmm. theflexiblechef.com. Also, please follow Neely at The Flexible Chef on Instagram. And you can follow me at Jill Sharfman. Um, Thanks, Neely. This was was great. Good luck with your book signing today. Mm -hmm. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. Thank you guys so much. (laughs) All right. Great. Thank you. And that is it for this episode of Let My People Eat please visit our website at letmypeopleeat.com and leave us a comment. Get in touch at our email at podcast at letmypeopleeat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. Post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag letmypeopleeatpodcast. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. And please remember that although we are certified professionals, this is not a medical advice podcast. No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I am Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.